Welcome to Overwatch. This time, we'll be talking about Symmetra. Welcome to my reality. In this video, we'll look into her equipment, her abilities, and the playstyle Symmetra promotes. We'll also be looking in depth at her current mechanics and how one hero can completely shape the battlefield. Luckily, I had some hands on time with Symmetra at the community event Blizzard Bran, so I'll be talking from my own experiences as well as that of others and a number of the design principles that seem to guide her character. Symmetra is a shaper in so many ways. She can build things out of thin air, and the main thing she shapes is how battle lines are drawn. A well placed Symmetra will be a massive boon to any team and a priority for the enemy to keep track of. Remember that as a Symmetra player, you are less of an individual support like Mercy or Zenyatta could be, but are there to provide the entire team with aid. Your very presence should enable them all to be much more effective. Let's begin with abilities. Symmetra's primary weapon is her Photon Projector. Holding down left click will produce a low damage beam that automatically tracks nearby enemies and deals steady damage. Its description implies that this damage ramps up over time, but unfortunately I can't confirm that for you. This is, however, somewhat of a last resort weapon. I can guarantee you that the time to kill will be faster for almost every other weapon in the game. The weapon does however come with an alternate fire, a large, very destructive charge shot that takes about 2 seconds to fully charge. This shot slowly travels forward and can penetrate through targets, including shields. This means that if a Reinhardt is slowly advancing with the rest of his team behind him, firing one of these babies right through will deal high damage to him and everyone behind him. It also eats Bastion alive. Next up are Symmetra's sentry turrets. These small turrets can be placed on walls, floors, ceilings, and just about anywhere they can fit, and they exist for disruption. The sentries lock onto the target with a bright blue beam that deals steady damage and slows the target. Symmetra can carry and deploy three turrets at a time, and these turrets replenish on a short cooldown. While not particularly harmful themselves, they set up kills beautifully. I have very fond memories of playing Widowmaker, easily picking off targets as they were caught in Symmetra's web, the beam letting me know where the targets were, even in cover, and making my shots easy. Lastly for normal abilities, we have her Photon Shield. This ability targets allies and lets you place a 75 hit point shield on them that will regenerate out of combat. You can place this shield on a single ally at a time, and the ability replenishes after a fairly long cooldown. You can shield as many allies as you have time for, and the shield is only removed on the target's death. There is no reason not to be using this constantly, but remember to prioritize the squishy targets that benefit the most from it, which need to be fighting directly. Finally, we have Symmetra's ultimate, potentially the strongest in the game, the teleporter. Symmetra places a teleporter exit at a target location, which links up to a pre-deployed teleporter in the spawn. Allies can then travel through the teleporter, which has no cooldown, giving them an instant link to the front line. This ability alone is what makes Symmetra potentially the most game-changing hero on the battlefield, but let's delve into team-based first-person shooter mechanics to really understand why. When you die in a game like Team Fortress or Overwatch, the penalty the team suffers comes from a few different places. A reduced damage output, fewer threats on the field, and a diminished ability to win fights. This is going to be especially true in Overwatch, a 6 vs 6 game, where losing 1 6 to your team is a huge detriment. The penalty is enforced by time, your respawn timer and the time it takes to get back to the battle. This also serves as a balancing mechanic on payload maps. The further the payload, the further someone has to run to get back, meaning the defending team has a greater reward for getting kills. In short, you're out of the fight for longer. Thanks to defensive characters and choke points, the distance can often be determined by battle lines. This concept exists in just about every team shooter, areas where it's somewhat safe to move and areas where it's clearly not. Crossing the battle line simply means you are in an area where you are outnumbered with limited support, and can often mean death, but also gives you the potential to surprise your foes. The battle line is often maintained by defensive characters, or reinforcements being able to get back to it before it can get shoved back. Battle lines tend to crumble at decisive losses where you lose a lot of people and the enemy gains ground while defensive heroes frantically rebuild at a choke point further down. And then the process repeats. Still with me? Good. Symmetra has a huge influence on this line as she effectively nullifies a lot of the penalty when you die. Being able to get the entire team back the moment they respawn to a specific location is a huge factor. In short, her ultimate serves as a cut down of your respawn timer by a significant margin, meaning any deaths your team suffers is less of a penalty. This is especially important when the run back to the action is long. But, like all things in Overwatch, we can talk counterplay. The teleporter isn't very durable and is very easy to find. The huge glowing circle rather gives it away. 
When the enemy has a Symmetra, it should be on every Tracer and Reaper's mind that this is their priority, and the Symmetra player must be thinking about protecting it. In the developer show match we were shown, one developer I noticed placed their teleporter in a fairly small room and immediately moved all their sentries to defend it, and then even hovered around the teleporter to protect it. This still couldn't stop a Tracer taking it out with a Pulse Bomb though, an excellent use for that ability. Hopefully this has given you an appreciation of why, when people talk about Symmetra, they tend to use terms like must have for offense, and that she might be the most important hero. Of course, this is speculation, but I can easily see managing Symmetra's teleporter being an important factor in a developing metagame, and having a pulse bomb to take it out immediately is not a bad idea. So, what can differentiate a good Symmetra from a great one? Well, if you like influencing the battle. Your job is vital in shifting the ebb and flow of the game. Focus on getting that teleporter up and safe, and making sure your team has a strong point to push from. You understand pressure and how to apply it. Occasionally moving forward to fire a full charge shot is something you should be doing. Remember that your presence makes it potentially hard for Bastion to do much. If you can nip out from behind a corner and hit him, he cannot stay there. You enjoy tactical turret placement. You can stick those things just about anywhere. Make sure they're in places that are a complete pain to destroy. And you enjoy being a high-tech weapon weaver with an interest in dancing and the thighs to prove it. Good lord, she has every right to flaunt those things. Now settle in, it's story time. In the world of Overwatch, 3D printing is a joke. Instead, a radical new technology is reshaping the globe, hard light construction. After the Omnic War, which destroyed so much, this method of construction became vital, especially in nations that housed a large population, such as India. The Vishkar Corporation was one such organization involved in rebuilding settlements, using hard light construction, and built the city Utopia. This brilliance got unnoticed by far more ambitious projects than just rebuilding. Being given the call sign Symmetra by the Veshkar Corporation, she was sent to travel the globe and demonstrate the potential of hard light technology, while also assisting in covert clandestine operations for the company. Ultimately, she is a believer in establishment of structure and order, or fixing the chaos that the world was pushed into following the Omnic Crisis, your classic lawful neutral, although she sometimes doubts the path she's following. But then, who doesn't? Symmetra is rather independent in the world of Overwatch, isolated from other characters. Shinoda has an appreciation for the order that they tried to establish, but would grow frustrated at their failures. She'd especially have a distaste for Blackwatch, and of people like McCree, no doubt enjoying the safety that rules and regulations provide. Ultimately, Symmetra is a character focused on order, structure, and process. Those that rankle against those ideas might find her somewhat unpalatable. Next time, we look at a lone warrior with no home to call his own, and on the complete opposite end of the technological spectrum, Hanzo. Thanks for watching to the end. I am but one channel amongst many, and I hope you learned a little about Symmetra. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Like, sub, all that fluff. I enjoy reading your discussion and opinions, so feel free to comment if you agree or disagree with anything. Special thanks go to those of you who already are. Also, thanks to my subscribers, 3,000 subs and rising today. You guys make all of this time and effort feel worthwhile. Toodles.